<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to North Park. I'm so glad that you're here with us today on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I'm going to, going to invite you to stand, whether you're here or watching online. Please stand with us if you're able so that we can worship together.
As we uh, gather in the house of the Lord, you know, there is joy in this place, right? This morning we've come in, and some of you are filled. You're already feeling great. And others are coming in, and maybe this morning was a challenge just to get here. And what's incredible is that as we worship God together, he fills us with his joy. He replaces our sadness with his joy through the power of his spirit. And so as we continue in worship, I just invite you, just turn to somebody and say hello, because we're going to be worshiping. It might get a little loud, and uh, you need to know who you're worshiping with. Every day you will 
for a second here. You know, Heavenly Father, we're in your house this morning. We know that you are already here, and we pray that we would just be acutely aware of your presence this morning. We exalt you at this time. We lift up our songs of praise, and we pray that they would be an offering that's acceptable to you this morning. Lord, we pray that as we continue to worship, that your spirit would be renewing and helping us be restored for those of us who are needing that. We love you, Lord. Oh 
Summer, summer months, gracious and loving Jesus, remind us of your ever-present guidance and love. Give us confidence in your presence, remembering all that we have learned and reflected on in the last number of months. As we work, play, and enjoy time with our family and friends this summer, may we feel your love within us, guiding us towards all that is right and just. Let us be grateful for the gift of this community, Jesus. Allow us to focus our attention this morning on all that you have for us as we worship and learn together. Amen. Thanks, everyone. You can grab a seat. My name is Josh Black, and I am the youth pastor here at North Park. I work with junior high and high school students, grades 6 to 12, and it is so lovely to be here with you today. If this is your first time at North Park, welcome. We're so glad that you're uh, here with us in person, or if you're watching for the first time today, thank you for being here. Uh, if you're in person, you can go out to the welcome booth after the service, and you can get all sorts of information on everything that's going on here. If you're online, you can check out our website or our Instagram or our Facebook page, wherever you'd like to get your information. But I am here today to tell you about a few things going on at North Park over the next few weeks, starting with our donation campaign for today. As you probably know, oftentimes over the last couple of years, we've done these donation campaigns where you drop things off under the vestibule here at North Park in, uh, at our Fanshawe campus. And uh, this week we're collecting items for Arcade and Sanctuary London. We're collecting water bottles, baked goods, and to-go snacks. And we don't have a slide for that, so you're gonna have to remember, but I believe in you, I think you can do it. So water bottles, baked goods, and to-go snacks. And we're taking donations underneath the vestibule again during the week this week. We are grateful for your donations uh, to this week and over the last couple of years. It's been really cool to see the generosity of our community here at North Park. Now. At our church, we have all sorts of these great partnerships with different amazing organizations. And so this morning, we wanted to just take a moment to highlight one of those partnerships. And so I'm going to direct your attentions to the screen. Hi, North Park family. Kevin Coos here from Athletes in Action, which is part of Power to Change. And I've been serving since 2008, since I was commissioned by North Park after coming to faith as an athlete at Western. Now, AIA started back in 1974 when a football player from the Eskimos shared his faith for the first time on national television and people started getting interested in this idea that athletes could actually be Christians as well and somehow live out their faith. And so I serve as the national director of our campus division 
where our goal is to see athletes transformed across the country on university campuses. And the hope is actually not that we would do all the work there, but that as they encounter Jesus, many for the very first time having no church background, but they then desire to be an impact on their team and to make a difference, not just then, but for the rest of their lives. And our vision is actually to see them take the love of Jesus and put that into action in some way and be freed from this performance mentality and this idol of sport uh, into the loving arms of Jesus and see how they might be used in this world. And so North Park is such a huge support and encouragement to me. So I love hearing from you and getting these, uh, these little notes saying that you're praying and that you're following what we're doing. And, and there's so many of you that support us financially as well. And we're a ministry that relies on that. And so thank you for your generosity to allow me to be in a place where I can actually use the gifts and talents that God has given me to do the very thing that he's called me to do in this evangelistic ministry where we're seeing people come to know Jesus as they hear this message of hope. And so one thing that's been really exciting is over this last year of COVID, we've been getting more and more messages from athletes across the country looking for a place to be, be along and be a part of something. And we're only on about 20 out of the 56 U Sport campuses. And so we decided this year to launch something called Athlete Connection, where we'd, we'd bring this community of athletes together and actually allow them a place where they can grow in their faith and go deeper and then be inspired by their peers to actually reach out and make a difference for others. And a huge highlight for us is a girl from Vancouver Island University, Danielle. They, they actually gave her an award for being a torchbearer, leading the way as an example to all athletes across the country after she did this marathon fundraiser to raise $17,000 for Parkinson's research. And so they're holding up one of our athletes who has come to Christ as the example of what they would like all athletes to be like across the country. And so what a great encouragement. And we now have Athlete Connection campuses all the way from Vancouver Island into Halifax across the other end of the country with a few athletes, uh, soccer and basketball players that are involved. And so please pray for us. I'm leaving just in a few days for our national training camp where athletes are going to come together to integrate faith and sport together and, and learn how to find Jesus in the midst of their sports. And, and pray for us as uh, we've just become foster parents and are navigating through that new journey. And, uh, and if you're ever in the area, please come visit us. We'd love to be encouraged. We'd love to pray for you and just get a chance to be in your lives. So thank you, North Park. We love you, we thank you, and, uh, and thanks for allowing us to do what God has called us to do up here in Ottawa. So great to hear from uh, Kevin and Athletes in Action. It was kind of neat because about halfway through that video, there was this, this booth in a restaurant with a number of students from Athletes in Action. And they're actually former Western students who got involved in our youth program at North Park to volunteer and serve their time. And it was a really great connection. And so please continue for them, or continue to pray for them. Uh, just a quick reminder that it's, it's the last weekend of the month, and normally we'd be passing around some offering plates here on, on site, uh, but of course we don't do that right now, and so I've got a slide here for you to look at, and you can see it online as well, of some ways that you can give, and so I'll give you a moment just to look at that. And now we will transition to youth summer events. So... I'm a youth pastor. I love working with our students here at North Park, again, from grade 6 to 12. And uh, there's a lot going on for our students this summer. We're doing things a little bit differently. Normally, we, we kind of focused our efforts into a junior high day camp, just one week junior high day camp. But this summer, we decided to do things a little bit differently, divide up a little bit. And we've got a number of different events that we're hosting for both our junior high students and our high school students. So what we're doing this year is we're saying for junior high, it's going into grades 7 to 9. So you see Anything junior high up there is going into grade seven to nine. For high school students, it's anyone going into grades nine to first year university. So if we had students who were with us in grade 12 this past year, we're still gonna welcome them to our events, but also our new grade eights going into grade nine this fall, we're gonna welcome them to our high school hikes specifically. So you'll see on the slide again, there's lots of information, so I'm just gonna highlight a couple of things. We've got high school hikes happening. We're doing five of them throughout the summer at different, uh, different destinations, different hikes around the city and the area. And so it's just a chance for us to take an hour, an hour and a half to do a little bit of hiking, to do some devotionals together, enjoy maybe a snack or two. Uh, and so that's what we're doing with high school students. Then with junior high students, we've got a junior high day camp in both July and in August, as well as some random kind of junior high events sprinkled in there as well. And then finally, we have our worship nights that we're going to be hosting for both junior high and high school students, one in July and one in August here on site at North Park Fanshawe. So lots going on. Uh, we've got some great new interns helping us 
us to run these events this summer. I'm really excited, but if you have any junior high or high school students who are looking for things to do this summer, I'd encourage you to get them involved. They can sign up at northpark.ca slash register. And one little hint, if you go to uh, select the Fanshawe campus and then select youth events, you can see all our events come up right on one page to see kind of what works for your schedule. So we're really excited about that. Finally, our summer celebration. It's summer. I'm so excited. I don't know about you. I love summer. Uh, and uh, summer, this week is our first week of summer. And so we're going to celebrate together out in the backfield here on campus at North Park Fanshawe. Uh, we've got, you know, the pavilion now kind of half we say half uh, work, you know, yeah, more than half, Paul says. So uh, we're going to enjoy some time outside. We've got Forrest Cliff who brought some fun activities for us to do in the backfield. Uh, if you did register, you're going to eat with us now. If you didn't get a chance to register, that's okay. We still would love to have you there. You can come. You just have to bring your own lunch, okay? I'm sorry to say, but if you go to McDonald's and grab a burger or you can pop home and come back, we would love to see everybody here in the backfield after this service. So that's that's it for me. Thanks for listening. I'm going to hand things over to Paul. Thanks, Josh. Good morning, everyone. Special hello to those watching via live stream. It's great to have you all with us today. In Federal Hall in New York City on January 8, 1790, then U.S. President George Washington delivered the first ever formal message and evaluation of the overall state of this newest country, the United States of America. His audience was the U.S. Congress, and the speech was seven handwritten pages long. From that point on, a State of the Union address from a sitting president has become part of the annual event in New York, in the United States. Throughout history, presidents have delivered the speech personally. They've written it and had it read. It's been broadcast over radio and TV. And then this year, when current U.S. President Joe Biden delivered the State of the Union address, it was aired on 13 different networks, live streamed over the internet, and it was available on various social media sites. A State of the Union address. You familiar with this concept? As I said, just an annual message delivered by the President of the United States to a joint session of the U.S. Congress, to the American people, and let's face it, to the global world as well, just about the current condition of the nation. It usually takes place toward the end of January or early February each year, and it includes reports of the nation's budget, economy, news, achievements, priorities, and the goals for the future moving forward. Now, it's interesting that Canada has never adopted this practice of having a prime minister stand up in parliament, give an hour-long speech about the state of the country in prime time, broadcast across all major Canadian networks. Oh, every once in a while, we'll have a speech from the throne, but that's usually delivered by the Queen's representative in Canada, the Governor General, and it often takes place about 2 p.m. in the afternoon, when everyone's either at work, at school, or we're watching soap operas. There's no hype, there's no sense of tradition, there's no inspiration. Now hear me on this, I love living in Canada. There's no other place that I'd rather live. But there's some areas we need to work on for sure, like our national sense of encouragement and excitement and unity for something other than just hockey. Now the topic got me thinking, has Jesus ever delivered a State of the Union address to his people, especially in the day where he walked the face of the earth? A message just to outline the current state of affairs for the people and then some encouragement for the future. Some might argue that the Sermon on the Mount was one type of State of the Union address. It's found in the book of Matthew from chapters 5 to 7. And in it, Jesus' address is a bit of what's going on in that first century Middle Eastern world. And he contrasts it with a better way of life that he calls them to. And have you ever noticed, if you read through the Sermon on the Mount, the way that Jesus repeats this phrase, you have heard it said, but I say, Matthew 5 at verse 38, you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say, do not resist an evil person. Matthew 5, 43, you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say, love your enemies. You have heard it, but I say... Jesus is describing where they are and what they know, and then he's stating there's a better way moving forward. Others have suggested that Jesus' State of the Union address is recorded in that passage of Luke chapter 4 that we spent some time in last Christmas. And maybe you remember, it's the mission statement of Jesus. 
found at Luke 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Now again, Jesus is outlining, he outlining here the condition of the people in that day. They are poor, and they are captive, and they are blind. And he's highlighting a better future that's available to all of them. And I love in the Gospels the way that Jesus just kind of tells it like it is. Have you ever noticed that? To his disciples that are caught in the midst of a storm at sea, Jesus looks upon them and says, Why are you so afraid? You have so little faith. To the religious leaders in the day who are so caught up in the purity laws of the day, Jesus looks at them and says, You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. To the disciples that came to him and were looking for food so that they could feed the people that were gathered around him, Jesus says, You feed them! See, Jesus wasn't some naive, pie-in-the-sky dreamer who had no grasp of reality. No, he was aware of the circumstances around him, and he called people to wallow in it a little bit. To, to be challenged and engage and learn from it. But then he painted a picture of a more hopeful future when we put our faith and our trust in him. Do you understand that? When I was the lead pastor of my church in Waterloo, I made it a tradition toward the end of June to give a bit of a State of the Union address to the congregation. The timing kind of marks the end of a ministry season from September to June, just before people head away for some downtime or maybe to get a bit of vacation. The message just simply highlights what went on in the church over the past year, some of the highs and some of the lows, and then looks toward the future. So I thought, since I've kind of had this title of lead pastor around here for the last six months, and we find ourselves at the end of June, why not reprise the State of the Union message here at North Park? Everyone okay if I do that? All right. Do you mind if I'm a little blunt? This past ministry season from September 2021 to June 2022, it's been rough. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, physically and emotionally draining, and I'm sure you've all experienced that as well. We've used this word unprecedented often in the last two years, but how else do you explain a global pandemic that has literally changed the way that we live, changed the way that we work, changed the way that we live, and changed the way that we worship? And although we may feel like we're kind of out of the woods to a certain degree, I think its influence still lingers. Do you remember last September in here, in this place? After a prolonged period of time where we were just allowed to have one single service that we live-streamed at 11 a.m., we were finally able to come back and gather together. We had two Sunday morning services in person. We had a little bit more of a robust children and youth program. Oh, you had to register for the services. You had to fill out a health questionnaire, and you had to put on a mask. But still, we were hopeful that maybe things were returning to some sort of semblance of normal. Staff continue to work diligently to provide online content to their ministry area, and more and more in-person activities began to take place throughout the week. And that continued all throughout the fall. I got used to preaching behind a piece of plexiglass, and we even implemented our Saturday night service for six weeks before Christmas. Almost 500 people attended our Christmas Eve services this past Christmas, which was incredible considering the fact that we weren't even allowed to gather the year before. Over 600 households viewed those services via live stream. I mean, it was truly the high point of the past two years here at North Park. And we ended those Christmas services like we've been known to do in the last several years. We lit candles and we remembered that Jesus' light breaks through in the midst of darkness. And then everything went dark again. Due to the uptick of cases of COVID, of people gathering over Christmas, we weren't allowed to have in person again for another six weeks. Oh, we continued to live stream each Sunday. And then finally, on February 6th, we were able to come back in the building. We returned to two Sunday services with our live stream. And you continued to have to register. You continued to have to fill out health questionnaires. You had to wear the mask all the way up to March 20th. And then restrictions were relaxed a little bit. And that's where we find ourselves today, this morning, almost normal. Now, just for interest's sake, on March 7th, 8th, 2020, the last weekend before COVID basically shut down the world, 1,236 people, not including children, 
gathered to worship in person across all of North Park sites, Fanshawe, Stratford, and Huron. Last Sunday, we had 523 people gathered in person at Fanshawe and Stratford, and about 450 households engaged the service online through our live stream. Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Now, I just aged myself about 40 years with that comment, but that's okay. See, the reality is, these days, the way we do church has changed completely. And we're not alone. Church leader, strategist, and podcaster, Carrie Neufa, have stated that a lot of people who were once part of the church haven't returned. At least, they haven't returned in person. Many churches who had to shut down to in-person gatherings, even for a few months, have seen 30 to 50% of their congregation disappear. And it's not because these people aren't gathering around other people. They're still going to grocery stores and sporting events, but they're just not attending church. See, once they got out of the routine of attending each week, it, it kind of became less important. Oh, if you ask them if they were still part of the church, they would say, yes, they just don't attend. Now, I don't... That really doesn't make sense, but that's what indifference does. The fact is, North Park Church, look around. We are different today than we were two years ago. The number of people that show up here every Sunday is down. You may have noticed some people that you used to worship with each Sunday aren't sitting around you anymore. This past season, we had 14 people that have withdrawn their membership from North Park, but many more have kind of left quietly. And that can be discour discouraging, can it? In part because we have been programmed to look at numbers to determine the success of a church. How big are we? Maybe this season one of the learnings is we need to repent of our need to, to count numbers and the pride for being obsessed with attendance figures as a sign of the effectiveness. And instead, maybe we have to look at other signs of measurement of what we're doing here at North Park. And let me tell you, the North Park elders, they're being convicted of that this past year. We started reading a book together that's called The Choice that challenges us on the metrics that have been used to define success in the church in the past. Things like attendance and money and buildings and how big your buildings are. And those, those things deliver results that measure ch church growth and ministry expansion. But the problem is when you get too focused on those things, we can sometimes miss the mo boat in terms of obedience and faithfulness to where God actually wants to take us. Now, that's not to say that numbers aren't important. I mean, you look through the Bible, and God often places had people count, numbers counted. People were counted. In fact, there's a whole book of the Bible called Numbers. I think the challenge for us these days is the motivation. Why do we count them, and how do we use those numbers? The number of people coming to Jesus and being baptized is probably something that we want to celebrate in the church. Isn't that right? I mean, last Easter, for the first time in two years, we were finally able to have a baptism service. Over 20 people were baptized. We celebrate that. The number of people joining small groups means more and more people are engaging with community and growing in their faith. That's a number that we celebrate. The number of people serving in ministry demonstrates obedience and commitment and faithfulness. That's something we celebrate. Some numbers do matter. You know an area that God's been convicting me of specifically over the last several weeks and months? It's the time that I spend lamenting those people who are no longer here and beating myself over the reasons why they left at the expense of celebrating you. The ones who are here, the ones who have said, Paul, we're going to put a stake in the ground and we want to call this place home. Those who have determined that this is where we want to grow and learn about God because God has brought us all together for such a time as this. Look around, this is it. This is our time. Isn't that exciting? I've used the word rebuilding often over the past few months. And I really think that's what God is doing at, in the church at this time in history. And not just North Park, but other churches around the world. As you know, I was in Scotland and Ireland recently, and I had a chance to hear just how COVID has impacted and disrupted ministry and the work of the church. But hey, don't we know? The church is resilient, isn't it? We've seen that all throughout history. That God can bring things up from the ashes. He can make all things new. In fact, throughout history, it was during some of the most difficult times that the word of God actually spread. The most rapidly, Christianity grew and churches were established. In the first century, just after Jesus' death and resurrection, Christians were being persecuted. Followers of Jesus were fleeing large towns like Jerusalem for fear of their lives. And they were taking refuge in smaller outlying areas. And with it, they were taking the message of Jesus. 
And Christianity grew in places like Ephesus and Galatia and Philippi and India and Africa. Persecution actually caused the gospel to spread. The persecution of Christians in the 1970s in China did little to to deter Christianity from spreading due to underground house churches. And today Christianity is the fastest growing religion in China with an estimated 44 million people declared to be a Christian in that country that still declares itself to be an atheist nation. See, I really believe that the impact of the church and the message of Jesus on our world post-COVID could be huge. I just sounded like Donald Trump when I said huge, didn't I? (laughs) Could be huge. Well, we've seen apathy for sure. Attendance in churches may have dropped for a time, but we also are seeing more real longing for meaning and hope in the midst of despair. I had a man in my office just last week, and he was broken. He was beaten down by COVID for sure, but the time through COVID has also given him time to really reflect and evaluate the things that were important to him. And he came to realize that for too long, he's been pushing relationships that should have mattered to him off to the side. He was neglecting his relationship with God. He was neglecting his relationship with his wife, with his children, and with his grandchildren. And he was in tears as he described this to me. And and as I listened to him and heard his heart, I was able to just tell him, it isn't too late. This next chapter of your life could be the best chapter yet as you turn into God, turn into your wife, turn into your family to demonstrate to them practically by making them the priority by making time for them that they really matter. And he felt somewhat uplifted, I think, when he left of what the future could bring. See, although our journey through COVID has been rough, let's not let it go to waste. Let's not let this time be a waste. Let's use our experiences and our learnings to change us and to challenge us and to grow us, especially in our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with each other. See, God does some of his best work in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our dark nights of the soul. God is rebuilding his church. Or maybe you prefer the word he's regrouping. And there are so many opportunities that lay ahead for us to continue to spread the message of Jesus. Do you mind if I do something with you? Now, of course, I ask you, and I haven't told you what I'm going to do. So just humor me. Would you put up your hand if you... Be- Thank you, Carissa. <laughs> now, let me tell you why you're putting up your hand. Would you volunteer to buy pizza for all of us for lunch? Thank you, Carissa. <laughs> Would you put up your hand if you've been around North Park Church for six months or less? All right, put your hand down. Put up your hand if you've been around North Park Church for about a year. All right. Can you put up your hand if you've been around North Park for from one year to five years? All right. Now, those of you who have been here from five to ten years, finally, put up your hand if you've been around North Park for over ten years. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. But you see, did you see the hands go up? Did you see what a wonderful blend we have of newer people and more seasoned North Park veterans? God is rebuilding his church, and he has amazing things in store for us in the days ahead as we continue to remain faithful and obedient for all that he has for us. See, one of the most incredible ministry opportunities that has kind of fallen in our lap throughout COVID, but more specifically in the last nine months or so, has been leveraging technology to reach beyond the walls of this building and posting our worship services and other ministry activities on YouTube via live stream and other things. See, that means not only are those members of North Park, I'm looking at you guys, not only those who are members of North Park that at this time feel more comfortable watching via the live stream, not only can you see this, but also people around the world can see it. And we've heard stories of people who are inviting their friends and their relatives from across the country and in other countries of the world to tune into our services. And some of these people aren't even followers of Jesus yet. But this is a tool that we're leveraging more and more to expand our reach for Jesus. And we're currently in the midst of hiring a person on staff at North Park, and their primary role will be to engage our online community and grow our capacity to reach others for Jesus virtually. Again, isn't that exciting? But it comes at a cost. Pre-COVID, we ran a traditional service in the back theater on Sundays at 11 a.m. 
It, it was generally for those who would classify themselves as seniors. The music was more traditional hymns, and then they would view a video of the sermon that was taken from one of the earlier services. This past season, we made the decision not to continue that service, and it was a tough decision for me emotionally, especially. But from a leadership perspective, it really wasn't. Now, I want all of you who attended that service just to hear me for a minute. We love you. We love the seniors at North Park, and that was a bit of the sentiment going around when we had to cancel this service, that North Park was no longer a place for seniors. The opposite is true. We love you. We respect and we cherish our seniors. I mean, that's why I phone most of you when I know your numbers on your birthdays and your anniversaries, because I love connecting with you. I love hearing your stories of faith. It grows my faith. And that's why I also connect closely with our seniors committee that plans your monthly events. We love you guys. In fact, I love you so much that I'm going to tell you that we need you in here, in this room, for this next season of ministry. See, the latest research coming out tells us that churches need to be less segregated and more unified. And that's why more and more you're going to see us trying activities that crosses age groups. Seniors, I know that you miss your hymns and you miss your community that you shared with one another. And that's why so much time and effort is going into ensuring that we have a solid seniors ministry committee that are planning monthly gatherings for you where you can experience all those things. But on Sundays, our younger people need to see you in here with them. They want to interact with you. They need your wisdom and guidance. They need your experience. In Proverbs 16, 31, it says, Gray hair is the crown of glory. It's gained by living a godly life. Some of that experience that you've gained with God through those gray hairs needs to be shared with others in here, specifically our younger people. And that can't be done when we relegate you to the back of the theater on Sundays. Thank you for the one. And by the way, to you younger people that love the more upbeat contemporary music, when we have our seniors in here, that means every once in a while we're going to play Amazing Grace or we're going to play some other hymn because it's not all about you either. It's not all about us, people. See, as a leader in the church, you just need to know we need to make the best decisions that we can based on the information, the time, and the resources that we have available to us. And you're not going to like some of those decisions sometime. Can I just say this to you? We don't make the decisions to tick you off. We don't make the decisions so you can fill our inbox with a bunch of emails that tell you just how, we feel, how you feel about us. We don't, believe me. But as leaders, we have to make the best decision we can based on information, time, and resources that we have. And the reality is when faced with the decision of using our tech team resources to facilitate a traditional service for 65 or 70 people in the theater or to run a live stream for 450 or more households that has a global reach, at this time, with our time and our resources, we couldn't do both. So the decision became fairly easy. And I hope you understand that. On the topic of tough decisions this past year, it brings us to our North Park here on site. Now, as many of you know, before COVID, North Park Community Church had three campuses. Our main campus here, Fanshawe, and then we launched North Park Huron in 2018 and North Park Stratford in 2019. Under the leadership of Pastor Shane Sims and Madison Eckerd, and at that time, David Cottrell from our Fanshawe site, Huron got off to a great start, and they were having a profound impact in that neighborhood, and then COVID struck. We're going to use that phrase a lot in the next 20 years, aren't we? Then COVID struck. But for a church that was especially dependent on personal face-to-face -face relationship and community engagement, the COVID restrictions were especially devastating to hear on. And I give credit to the creativity and the efforts of Shane and Madison during that time. In the end, Shane left for another opportunity, and we do nothing but bless Shane in what he's doing in our city for Jesus and Madison stayed on, and we were thankful for that. But eventually it became apparent to us that we needed to amalgamate what was left of the Huron community back into the main site for now. Well, we've held on to that Huron building, and we're perfectly discerning what opportunities may be in the future when a new lead pastor arrives next year. But for now, do you know what we've been able to do? We've been able to rent that building for a reasonable price to a smaller church, Mosaic, who actually has their roots here at North Park Fanshawe so that they can continue to shine the light of Jesus Christ in that neighborhood. Do we celebrate that? Yeah. 
on the topic of tough decisions, let's keep going. Last May 2021, our lead pastor at the time, Matthew Eckerd, resigned after serving North Park faithfully in various capacities for almost 15 years. A search committee was established to find a new lead pastor. Much prayer and time was put in the process, and in August, a candidate was declared, Steve Shane. Steve preached a few times throughout August and September, and he officially started his role here in October. And less than three months later, he was gone. And that was confusing, and that was disorienting for many of us for sure. And we questioned God, why, why would that happen? But if we know anything about the work of God, we know that God is a redeemer, God is a restorer, God makes everything new. Steve has since been hired as a pastor of a church in Chatham, and again, we wish him nothing but the best in his role there. This series of events have led me to assume the lead pastor role here for a season, alongside Wanda Sylvester, our director of admin and operations, overseeing a very committed and dedicated staff team who are passionate about what they do and why they do it, to spread the hope of Jesus Christ and to help others grow in their faith. Now, as you're aware, I'll be retiring from full-time ministry here at North Park on April 30th, 2023. And the North Park elders and leaders have already begun the process of discerning what the leadership structure should look like moving forward. And we want to invite you, please be in prayer for the staff and the elders during this ongoing discussion. And be involved in the process wherever you can. You're going to hear lots of updates in the days ahead. So there. I've taken some time to just share some of the context of where we find ourselves today as we look back over our season. But let me use the second part of this State of the Union address to share some things we're excited about now and in the days ahead. And let me just start by thanking you for your faithfulness, particularly in your giving this past season. You know, we, we say that gratitude and generosity is a core value around North Park, and we even put it up on the wall in some fancy poster. But it's easy to put it on a wall. Is it really what's being played out in our midst? And I think it is. In fact, gratitude and generosity is something that's divine, defined North Park almost from the very beginning. When I wrote a dissertation I had for school a few, a few years ago, there was a section that I had to describe the church where I was a pastor. And so among other things, I wrote this about North Park. North Park also has a history of strong financial giving. Not only is it able to sustain its yearly budget, but many times there have been situations where there was a financial need over and above the budget requirements. When accompanied by a compelling vision, the community at North Park responds in a generous way. And we have seen that time and time again this past season. When many other churches were floundering financially through COVID, you gave generously to meet our budget needs. See, by giving, you pay the staff's salary. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. But you also, with that giving, allows you to support the living and ministry expenses of missionaries around the globe. And you heard from one today, Kevin Coos, and you're going to hear from more in the days ahead. By you giving, it also allows us to subsidize our Stratford site so that they can continue to reach that community for Jesus. It also allows us to fund an ESL program for new Canadians in our building. And this past year, your giving allowed us to resettle two new refugee families to start a whole new life again here in Canada, and more are on the way. Let me continue. Because of your faithful giving, we can subsidize Humble Beginnings, a daycare center here at North Park. We can support Lord Elgin, a school in one of the most impoverished areas in Ontario. But this season, we were able to purchase a class set of headphones for their learning center. We were able to buy an industrial-sized washer and dryer that they needed at the school. We were able to provide a grade 8 graduation lunch, and we were able to host an annual Christmas dinner for their entire staff and their entire student body. And almost weekly throughout this past season, we've asked you to give donations for our community partnerships for those who are in need. So you gave to our food cupboard for sure, but then you gave to Arcade, Sanctuary, London Pregnancy and Family Support Center, and you have responded overwhelmingly. Do you know we have a group of people that meet every Sunday morning at the back of the church and they take food off of a truck and they compile containers where that food goes to those in need and they do it for London Food Coalition, but they do it for Jesus. And this past season, we gave you an opportunity to partner with City Church in Lithuania to aid Ukrainian refugees displaced because of the Russian invasion. And you gave to date almost $60,000 over and above regular budget. 
And we were touched two weeks ago by a video of the way that your money is being used to aid and to care for those uprooted from their homes and families because of Jesus. It gets me excited. I don't know what it does to you. It feels like a State of the Union because you're clapping regularly. I prefer if you stand up and clap and then sit down. <laughs> You've seen the State of the Unions. And as much as all that excites me, there's more. Your giving has also allowed us to construct a pavilion on our site. Maybe you saw it when you came in. Here's our passion. Our passion is whatever, whatever land, whatever buildings, whatever resources God gives us, we do not hoard for ourselves. Our passion is to be able to use all of those God-given gifts to be a blessing to our neighborhood. Over the past few years, you may have noticed that we've done some work on our backfield to make it more usable for us, of course, but also for our neighborhood. We seek to be a blessing to our community. This pavilion will provide us with so many more possibilities to plan and to host special events that foster community gathering, that foster community engagement, and foster spiritual growth, whether that's through things like picnics, or fall fests, or concerts, or sporting events, or toboggan parties. Construction, as Josh said, we're halfway through. No, we're almost done. Construction is scheduled to be completed by the end of July, so stay tuned for more details of the ways that we can get involved and you can get involved in this. See, our budget is always something we need to be mindful, just like you have to be at home. And you can imagine, with people stepping away throughout COVID, it affects our bottom line. But over the past few months, we have had 31 new first-time donors give to ministry at North Park. And after the, over the last nine months, our e-transfer donations have increased almost 20%. Thank you. Thank you for your ongoing faithfulness and generosity as you partner with us using your financial resources to give glory to God. Okay. <laughs> the second thing I'm really excited about around here and encouraged is the number of people that are stepping up to serve at North Park. We're in the midst of a ministry evaluations with our staff, and so I just asked them a few questions. I asked them, what are a few of your successes this year? What are some of your challenges and what is your area of greatest need? There were various answers, as you can imagine, given their ministry area, but almost all of the staff mentioned that a success was just simply seeing people come back and engage with them in a meaningful way. And their greatest need, almost everyone mentioned. Anyone care to guess what it is? It's volunteers, or as Barry Canning likes to say, ministry partners. They're in need of people serving with them in their ministry area. And once again, because some people have stepped away from the church and others are tentative to get involved because COVID's still lurking, we have a shortage of people to run these programs that we're really discerning and wanting to run so that we can have max impact for Jesus. But I'm hopeful. Last week, I hosted an orientation for our visitation team. Now, the visitation team is a group of people who visit members of North Park who no longer are mobile enough to, to get out to our services or our activities and it's such an important care ministry here at North Park because we don't want anyone to fall through the cracks. Unfortunately, our visitation team was short-staffed and people were falling through the cracks. Our shut-ins weren't being visited. So at the meeting, we had 26 people show up. And many of them stated that they just saw themselves at this stage of their life, they're in their 50s and 60s, where they have a little bit more free time, where they're still healthy enough. And so they wanted to use this season of their life to have max impact for Jesus to turn in and to serve in the church. And so far, six of them have absolutely volunteered to join the team. I had another one this morning that said they wanted to, and some are still contemplating their involvement. We are going to be able to go and visit people that can't get out to North Park. We're going to be able to take Jesus to them. And this past month, we had three new people come forward and serve as chat hosts for our live stream. It's such an important role. And Christine right here, if you see that she's got a computer in her lap, it's because she is serving as our live stream host right now and has probably 200 and whatever households where she's engaging right here in our service. And if that's something you want to do, let us know. Do you remember last week I stood up here and I stated how valuable you are to the church? and that we needed you, we do. We need you. We need you in children's ministry and youth ministry. We need you on our welcome team. We need you to give your leadership gifts and consider whether you can be an elder. 
We need you to step up and to serve coffee in our gym. Seems like such a silly thing. But we need to be able to make people feel welcomed and make us feel like they're home. And so far, after the 11 o'clock service, we're not able to do that. We need you to help us serve coffee. We need you on care teams. We need you leading small groups. The list goes on and on. See, we need you not to keep you busy. There are enough things in our world that will keep us busy, including playing word games on your computer or watching TikTok reels for hours. There's enough things that keep us busy. No, we need you to partner with us to spread the greatest message of hope and salvation known to humankind, the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that so desperately needs it now more than ever before. Amen? Do you know the antidote to indifference or apathy? It's passion. And do you know where you get passion from? It comes by getting in the game, getting involved. If you want to get in the game around here, just drop us a line. Here's the email that you can connect with. Connect at northpark.ca, and we would love to share with you ways that you can get in the game. About a month ago, our staff, senior leadership team, and the elders got together for a two-day planning retreat, and we packed a lot into those two days. But maybe most importantly, we set our three strategic goals for North Park Church in the coming year. And it's interesting that the unanimous consent was that the focus in the coming year needs to be on engaging and discipling and ministering and caring for individuals as the body of Christ, rather than this obsession with numerical growth, brand awareness, or bombarding people with more programs just to keep them busy. Our three strategic goals for the coming year, number one, lead pastor search and leadership succession. Now, as I mentioned, the elder board is already well underway with some of that and discussions will be made known to you. They'll keep you aware of what's transpiring, including getting your feedback and ways that you can be involved in the process. Number two is community engagement. Now hear me. I've just shared a bunch of ways that we're engaging our community out there, and we've always done that. But for this next season of North Park's history, we really see that our focus needs to be as much about what's going on in here, about community engagement here. We're rebuilding the church. God's rebuilding the church. We're involved with that. And so we want to do some concentration on how to build community engagement here. See, now more than ever, it's important that the church not only talk about the importance of community, but we actually go, th go beyond the surfacey stuff, and we call people to really do life together. True engagement with one another, to encourage one another in our faith journey. Barry Canning is going to launch a fresh uh, launch of our small group ministry in the fall, and you're going to see ways that you can be involved with that to really do life with other people. The elders have set up a committee to look at the way that diversity is represented at North Park as we seek to foster authentic community around here. And we're also going to explore how we can use both the in-person and the live stream services and digital opportunities for more engagement and more life transformation. See this hybrid model of doing church where I'm both speaking to a camera and I'm speaking to you live? That's not going away. That is here to stay. So how? How can we leverage it for the kingdom of God? And our third strategic goal is discipleship. How do we grow in our faith? As I mentioned last week, for several weeks, the staff have gathered in collaborative discussions about what discipleship looks like across all age groups and across ministry areas at North Park as we seek to formulate a discipleship strategy. More time and attention will go into that goal in the days ahead because ultimately, isn't that what the church is about? We are not primarily a social club. We are not a concert venue and we are not a special events generator. This is a place where we seek to find Jesus. We seek to grow in our faith and care for one another in community and then be able to share that life-saving good news of Jesus with others so that they can find Jesus and the cycle continues. Do you see that? So... <laughs> So there you have it, North Park Community Church, State of the Union, June 2022. I hope these words have brought a little clarity of things that have gone on over the past ministry season and decisions that have been made. I hope you've been encouraged by the ways that you've been involved in the work of the church over the past year, and you are excited about the possibilities that lie ahead. And maybe more significantly, I pray that you've been inspired by the work and the faithfulness of God in our midst over the last 10 months specifically. No matter how dark or how hopeless things appear, and there have been a lot of dark days this past year, no matter how much we as humans can mess up the works, God is there. God is at work. God is bringing us back to him. He is redeeming and restoring. He is forgiving and he is reclaiming. Our God is faithful. In our staff meeting this past week, we sang a song. It's a beautiful song. It's one that we've sung many times around here. 
But for whatever reason, the words struck me in a different way as I just pondered God's care and provision at North Park Church this past year. It goes like this. Listen to the words and see if these words mean something to you. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to say it with a beat. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I've lived in the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Because your goodness is running after. It's running after me. That's our God. The God that loves us so much, he'll pursue us. That's the God that we love. That's the God that we serve. The one who is so good and faithful to us throughout our lives and throughout the life of this church, specifically the past year. So will we surrender our lives to him and trust that he will continue to be good and faithful and that he will guide us into the future, amen? Let's pray together. God, it is good to stop sometimes, stop the whirlwind and just reflect, just to pause, look back at the ways that you've been at work in our life. And I mean, I don't know how many of us do that, but it is a great exercise. And especially in the church, man, we can get so busy. We can just keep pumping it out, pumping it out, pumping out sermons, pumping out ministry activities that we never stop and evaluate. And I'm just thankful for today, a chance that we've just been able to look back and it's been, it's been quite a year. And you know what? I don't, I don't wish it away. I think we've learned a lot. I think we've grown a lot. And I think this is our opportunity to continue to be refined by your spirit. Thank you for the way that you've been at work in this church. God, boy, we can, when left to our own devices, we could mess it up. But even in spite of our humanity, you've continued to be at work and you've done amazing things. You've been so good, so good to us. And I just pray for each one gathered here, God. I pray that this is a time in the next little bit before they head away for their vacations that they can just ponder and how the past year went. What did they learn? How did they grow? What's their relationship like with Jesus as compared to 10 months ago? What's their relationship like with their family or with their friends? And they can really do an honest inventory of that and then turn to you and invite you to continue to be at work in their hearts god we look forward to what you have in store in the days ahead and we want to declare that we trust in you and that we believe that you've got amazing things in mind may you just allow us to see the wave that you've created and then we can just ride it with you thank you for your blessings god we pray in jesus name amen <laughs> Would you please stand as we conclude our worship service? I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. The moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a
running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I'll give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me And all my life you have been faithful elements I think for those of you who are watching at home if hopefully you have a wafer some juice with you and the reason I want you to stand is because pre-COVID at North Park we would get you to come forward and participate in communion it was activity it wasn't passive and so by standing we're just saying you know we're participating in this we're standing up 16th century theologian and church leader Martin Luther when talking about the Lord's Supper he referred to something called the great exchange. And the great exchange simply was that when you come to the table, what you're doing is you're exchanging all of your stuff, your sin, your junk, the things that get in the way of you having a relationship with Jesus, your insecurity. You are exchanging that at the communion table and you are returning and receiving his body and his blood. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. I know we've got some people that are still getting it, so that's okay. We'll wait on you. But in exchange for those things, we receive the body and the blood of Christ that washes us clean, that gives us new life in him, that gives us forgiveness. That stuff that you've been holding on that you can't let go, just know that God's forgiven you through the blood of Christ. So at the communion table, that's what we're doing. We're exchanging that stuff. So as we reflect back on the past year and what God's been doing in your life, what he's been doing in the life of the church, this is a wonderful way to conclude by taking communion. At the communion team, we're exchanging our stuff for his mercy, grace, and forgiveness and new life in him. So I see movement has stopped. If you have your wafer here or at home, this is the body of Christ that was given for us. And this is the blood of Christ that was shed for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that we have through Jesus. That we have new life in you. Anything that gets in the way, God, anything that wears us down, the sin, all of those things, God, we can surrender to you. I pray that you help us to do that. So often in our lives, we hold on to things, not thinking that we can place it anywhere, but you've just asked us to give it before you to place it before you, surrender it to you. And in replace of that, you give us your spirit that just wipes us clean and gives us hope. Thank you for this song. Your goodness is running after us. It's pursuing. You're a God that pursues. We're thankful for the hope that that has to offer us, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just stay standing. We're going to finish with one final song from Brett and the team. Declare as one Great is the love of the 
This morning, and God be exalted, God be exalted in everything. We live for your glory, live for your glory. God be exalted, God be exalted. weekend of June, realizing that for many of you, next week begins vacation schedules, just a time to get away and rest and relax, and we pray that you get a time to get some rejuvenation this summer, but I want to encourage you, we're launching our new message series next week, our summer series, it's entitled The Bible According to Me, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at some pretty familiar passages of scripture that we actually misinterpret, and we're going to look at what they really mean and how they impact our life. So be, if you're available, come back next week, live stream next week, and we'll start that service. Matt's left. We have a summer celebration going on right now out in the field. Don't run off. If you signed up for it, then absolutely go. If you didn't sign up for it, go and grab some food and come back. It's a chance for us to celebrate together. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.